Hello, this is FightTalk.net. Craig Scott here, joined by British champion Frank Buglioni. Frank, how are you, mate? Yeah, very well, thank you, Craig. Good, good. We're down here at York Hall, obviously, watching some fights. It's a good win promotions card. Steve's obviously your manager. Yep. Um, so you're down here supporting. How have you found the night so far, mate? Yeah, very good. Um, you, you're always going to get entertaining fights at York Hall on a Steve Goodwin show. Um, the atmosphere you can't beat. And uh, yeah, I, I live and breathe boxing, so to come and support the guys on their way through, um, t teammates, Nick Parper, Sparring partners Charlie Quinn, uh, Spiros Dimitris. Yeah, it's great. It's a, it's a real good evening. Yeah, it's definitely a good night of boxing. Um, Charlie obviously getting a good win earlier on as well. Got a stoppage. Yep. You are currently preparing for your own defence uh, of the British title uh, against Ricky Summers. How's the preparation going for that fight on July 1st? Yeah, it's been it's been fantastic. Obviously, I was preparing for June the 3rd, so I've been in the gym. I'll be honest, I was I was in the gym from January. Um, I was getting ready for March the 4th. Unfortunately, suffered a cut. So um, aside from having a, a week off to let the cut heal, so I could get back into to running and conditioning, I've, uh, I've been in the gym since. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm firing all cylinders, um, getting some great colleagues sparring in Helens and Mac um, last week, which was very good. Nice. Um, yeah, I had Lawrence Akoli, George Groves, just to name a few. So uh, yeah, we're getting good good quality guys in. Is there is there a danger when you when you have delayed fights or cancelled fights that you could be guilty of overtraining? Do you monitor that quite closely with Don? Yeah, this is where um, the experience Don has comes into play, and obviously myself, I've, I've been at the uh, the high levels now, I've had postponements. Um, my last three or four fights have all been postponements um, from the world title fight, delays and cuts and um, setbacks. So yeah, I know to, to take my training down and go again and build it in. Um, so that's that's what comes with experience. And um, on the flip side of that is something that Ricky Summers hasn't really got. Um, he hasn't got that big fight experience. He hasn't got the big camp experience. So um, yeah, I mean, whether he deals with the setbacks and the postponements as well as I do, um, is yet to be seen. How, how much do you know, Frank, about Ricky Summers? And, and was he always someone that you thought would pop up for you to defend a title against? Or was that a kind of random name that was thrown in there? I'll be honest, I kind of I looked through the light of the weight rankings. I was looking at guys with good records, and um, there was three or four, and we put a, we put a fight out to them. And Ricky Summers was one that come back. So. Um, yeah, I, I credit to him for, uh, for having the guts to get in and fight me. Um, but I think the, uh, the, the phone's going to go quite after this one. Yeah. You obviously had a fight of the year contender with Jose Button, which nobody seems to stop talking about. I know you get asked about it all the time, mate. Is that, obviously that's a fight that you want down the line. Is that a fight that you'd feel comfortable you would end in a more clinical fashion next time? Exactly that. I, I've said it before, I mean, um, I went and fought Jose Burton on, on his home turf. He was the champion. I was the away fighter. Um, so I had I was up against it all. Not just that, that was my that was my second fight at light heavyweight. I had a 90 second blowout in the in the March um, prior to that, and then before that it was my super middleweight um, world title challenge. So I've been out of you could say a year over a year. I had 90 seconds in the ring for over a year, and um, I went in and did a number on him. But um, now with this kind of ex the experience I've had, comfortable with the weight and the uh, the regular fights, it's, uh, he's certainly up against it. And and he's got to come and take this title off of me. You nearly got me in trouble, mate. I nearly broke the couch. I was jumping up like a madman during that <laughs> fight. It was a cracker. Um, after you fight Ricky Summers, is the plan to defend and try and win the belt outright, or do you plan on eyeing up European fights, world title fights? Again, I can't, you, you can't take anything for granted in boxing, so I'll, uh, I'll go into this fight the best I can be. I'm going to do a, do a good job uh, against Ricky Summers, and then whatever, however the landscape lies, that's what I'll go and do. Um, whether it be some, some big domestic clashes, I'd, like, I'd love the rematch with Jose Bern, I've got a fight mandatory as well. So I'd love to win that belt out, but it hasn't been done for 25 years and there's some good names in that belt. Um, Tony Bailey, Nathan Cleverly, Ovil McKenzie, there's some, some great names on there. Um, Enzo Manconelli. So, um, yeah, to win it outright would be fantastic. Um, but if the if the opportunity came up to, to fight Nathan Cleverly for his world title, I'd have to look long and hard at that because uh, it's a fight I'm certainly interested in. Well, that's a name that's been bandied about, Cleverly. Uh, obviously, you have other world champions as well, but that Cleverly fight, in a Cardiff stadium, somewhere like that would obviously be a massive fight. Also, rumours are trying to get it in a London stadium. <laughs> yeah, listen, let's do it. Yeah, let's listen, travel he's, for he's, me. A, he's a champion. I'll, I'll go where I go. Yeah, is that a fight you would fancy? And, and what do you think you've seen in Cleverly? Obviously, I don't want you to tell me too much, but is there, is there something you've spotted in Cleverly you fancy you could take advantage of? I think Nathan Cleverly um, is a very good fighter. I won't say was because he still is, um, but. 
in my opinion, his best days are behind him. And um, after the Kovalev fight, he's never really been the same. Um, I think he's stagnated. Um, he hasn't really got a boxing trainer, so I can see that there's a lot of mistakes he's making, some, some basic errors in terms of his boxing ability. Fitness-wise, very good. Strength, very good. Um, toughness, very good. Um, his power's not massive, so I'd be comfortable to go in there and if we come down to it and trade with him. So, um, yeah, and I've, I've spied him in the past, so I, I know uh, I know my levels and where he's at and where I was at and um, where I am now. I think the good thing for the fans would be you love, you love a tear-up, Frank. Nathan seems to now love a tear-up. Up. Yep. Last couple of fights he's been in, uh, it would obviously yep. provide fireworks for the fans. Um, listen, thank you very much. Quickly, just let me ask you, uh, Kovalev Ward 2 this weekend, mate. I think Ward's going to do a better job than he did the first time. Yeah, so I'm going to lean towards Andre Ward. Yeah, I think that's fair. Listen, thank you very much. Frank Buglioni, British Light Heavyweight Champion, fighttalk.net. I appreciate your time, mate. I'll let you enjoy your evening. Cheers, Craig. Thank you.